train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding, okay? I just want to tell you, first of all, that I'm going to be answering the question in the title there, you know, how long till you basically can compete in a show. And I'm also going to be taking you through a workout and I'm also going to be burning some guys in the gym at Murph's gym there. It's going to be fun. So I think you're going to enjoy the workout because I give you some secret tips as well as uh, have some fun with some of the members in the gym. So yeah, stay tuned. Make sure you just don't click off after I'm done talking here because there's going to be a good workout after. I just want to talk to you a little bit about a comment that was made underneath one of my videos. And uh, this guy, um, like a lot of people do because... The thing is with every video, I can't go into the complicated history that is my entire life in every single video because everybody falls asleep. So it's it's normal that there would be misunderstandings around you know timelines and how long it took me to train, how long this and that. But anyway, this one person said that Jason, it only see, it only took you two years to get to your genetic potential because you competed in 97 and then I saw you in 98 and you seem to be not too much different, right? So the fact is there's a couple factors going on here. One is you can't really tell what the progress is totally just from a picture, especially some badly taken photographs that were off stage by amateur photographers, right? So just so you know, from 97 to 98, my physique did actually improve by at least two or three pounds, which is amazing. The fact is, is that I also improved uh, when 99 came and also 2000 and 2002 when I won a show then. So anyway, this person said, Jason, you must have just made all your gains in two years. Well, just from that alone, uh, that's just from my later competition history, not my earlier competition history, and I still was making gains then. So the truth is, is that I started training when I was 14 years old and I didn't step on stage until after eight years of training, right? So it took me till the time I was 22 to the time I stepped on stage for my first show. So no, it did not take me two years to get to my genetic potential. I know most of you guys know this, but uh, I, sometimes I gotta point out these actually simple logics because it seems like people don't want to do the research. So if you're going to make statements like this, just please do your research. Just look at my videos. You can go in the, the magnifying glass down here, type in whatever question you have. And chances are I've probably made a video on it because I made over 400 videos now. So I've got quite an intense library there that's at your fingertips that you can benefit from. So please do so. Please peruse through that library, man, because I spent a lot of time making those videos. So I'd appreciate it if you watch them. So yeah, as far as the question, how long will it take for you to be competition ready for stage? This will depend on the person, their genetics, everything like that. But I would say if somebody has like athletic history, they like say they've been in sports, they've been active their life and, and they, they've, you know, they hold on to a fairly lean body fat level. You know, I'd say within a couple of years, they could actually step on stage and look like they're in shape. Now, whether they're going to win or not, that's going to be a different thing. And I think that will also boil down to genetics. But really, I think you got to be nice to yourself a little bit. You got to be a little gentle with yourself. And I find a lot of people want everything today. They want everything like yesterday. They want all the results. They want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in two weeks. But the fact is, is that you got to give yourself at least five years before you really start to really come into your own. You know, it, when I was 14 years old, it took me till I was about 19, 20 years old till my physique really started to look like I lifted weights and I didn't have to tell everybody I was a bodybuilder. They actually kind of knew that I lifted weights. So, you know, be a little gentle on yourself. You know, sometimes people look at the final progress pics of somebody, they'll, they'll look at, you know, something that took 10 years uh, to come to full culmination and then they'll be like comparing themselves to that and say, oh geez, you know, I should, I should look like that in two weeks. So yeah, that's not going to happen. And uh, if you're a natural guy like myself, then you just got to put your head down and, and put the time in, put the work in and put the intelligence and the awareness in. That's the most important thing. So yeah, today I'm, I just got a coffee in Agassiz, if you can tell, I'm in Agassiz right now. I'm gonna have to show you some clips of this town at some point. I just don't have a GoPro camera to stick to my car, but as I drive around, but I think that'd be really neat for you guys to get a feel for this town because it's kind of like this really old fashioned sort of feel. It feels like almost like an old Western town because it is a kind of a farm town, really. Yeah, I'm gonna show you some more of the footage outside here. Uh, good news too, I have more pictures that I located from my other bodybuilding shows. That stuff's gonna be coming into my possession in about a week or so. And so I'll be putting up videos on that and uh, you will get to see all things that I did in my life. Hey, well, not all the things, so just some of the things. Yeah, and I'll talk to you about it. I'm gonna be going to the gym today. I'm gonna to actually do uh, some, I think I'm gonna do some upper chest because I did some lower chest yesterday and I just feel like I need to pump up the upper chest here. I'm gonna do some buys and tries and a little bit of back and maybe some calves or something. So anyway, I'll play it by ear. I'm going to Murph's gym in Chilliwack, so stay tuned. Mountain, 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 mountain. So here I am at Murph's gym. I'm gonna do uh, some upper chest some lat pull downs uh, and a little bit of arms and uh, yeah, we'll see what else I can get in here. So um, 
Yeah, I'm kind of filling in the cracks here because last night I actually did some heavy Romanian deadlifts. I actually went up to 365 and so I'm quite proud of that. That means I, I'm pretty good. So anyway, I did that last night and my upper back is pretty sore, my traps, rhomboids, as well as my hamstrings. I'm not gonna be doing any legs today, but at the same time, I'm gonna get uh, some of the little muscles in that I couldn't really work extremely hard last night just because, like I said, I had worked so hard on the Romanian deadlifts. So yeah, let's go inside. What am I doing? I should do that in slow motion, right? It's gonna be in slow motion. Much better. Session, God, it's, fucking, it's so cheap, honestly. It's so cheap. Like, that's totally worth it. And you know what? You, you know, and, and honestly, they should be charging you an asshole fee. Like, basically, you know, like extra money because you're just you're a real estate agent. Everybody knows. Everybody knows real estate agents are hard to work. I feel so good today. I feel so good today. I feel so good today. <laughs> Enough of energy today, hey? Eh? Hey Rachel, I feel so good today. Thank you, have the double mold good today. Eh? I feel so good today. Kyle's, Kyle's my friend because he's not on a diet Put anymore. Put sugar in that fucking mocha. I think you have mocha with sugar and whipped cream. Yeah, that's right. Funny thing is, like, look back at my EAS interview. Yeah. I talked about it. I actually gained weight for my show once I started dieting. Wow. So I used to gain weight because I'd eat so shitty outside right. of it that when I ate carbs and protein, it's saying to feed my muscles properly. Right. And then my metabolism went up, and then That's I'd end awesome. up coming leaner. Wow. So there's almost like a blend of that that happens in the body. So I'm almost wondering if it's better to do moderate cardio, but for longer intensity, so that way you can right. get more carbs in it, and that way you're yeah. skinning that fat yeah, off. Yeah, fair enough. Well, that's, that was another takeaway I talked about getting leaner. Yeah. I tried no cardio, which I liked, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I would definitely do some cardio next time, even for mentally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to know that you're doing everything. Yeah, maybe some nice sneakers. There's a subtle different things that change yeah. your body, right? Like I'm proud of myself for trying something new. Yeah. Because it's scary, right? It's the only way to do it. The only way to evolve is to try something new anyway. Yeah, well, how do you, how do you know? you got to experiment with yourself, which is shitty, but it's the only way. Yeah. I'm a transformer. But remember, I'm an Autobot. I'm not a Decepticon, I'm an Autobot. I'm a good guy, see? That's why I kind of like not competing in a way because I'm trying to find the happy medium between yeah. competition and looking good for YouTube but not necessarily killing myself. Yeah, you know? and that's a hard one, right? Because yeah, you get too lean and as you know, you just, you make no progress. That's right. And yes. you look really good, but then it's like you're just treading water, right? You're just standing there, so. Yeah, so I think there's a happy medium that, and for sure. I think for everybody, you need to find that happy medium. Yeah. yeah. I'm still trying to find it myself. It's like a, Well, that's why, like I said, if I compete again, it won't be until 2019 because I need 12 months to not be on the diet. Like, 
was fun sharing a chat and a few sets with Kyle Murphy there or whatever and yeah you see that uh, I'm still discussing things and, and I still and even Kyle you know he's a pro and he just competed again You're always trying to evolve and find out what is working for you in this moment because there are so many times where I competed in certain bodybuilding shows and I did the same diet that I did before and that diet just did not work the same for the body right so your body's always changing always evolving so this is why I always talk to you about not getting too attached to what you know to be true because sometimes your body will come in and slap you in the face with some truth you know what I'm saying so if you're wondering why my hamstrings are sticking out so much just so you know it's the heavy Romanians. I'm telling you, those heavy Romanian deadlifts are unbelievable for hamstring development, especially for me and my body type. So you might want to try them. You might want to try them. I'm giving you some secret tips right now. These are secret tips. I'm sharing them with you and it's up to you whether you want to embrace them or not. But wait a second. I think I'm going to burn a guy pretty soon here. No, 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 no that's going to be in a little bit. I, I'm not going to burn at him yet. Just in a minute. Okay, let me just jump up to the ceiling. Okay, there you go. I'm going to pull that weight down. So what I'm doing here is some lat pull downs. And uh, this is awesome because I just got that wicked lat pump going because I did the Romanians the day before and some rows. So I've got that nice tightness happening. And now I'm doing a stretching movement. This is a secret technique. I'm going to talk about it at the end of the video. But it's one of those things where if you're a little bit tight and then you do a stretching movement, highly effective when you do that stretching movement the next day. So this is something to experiment with there, boys and girls. And I almost went up through the ceiling there. The guy right there, he's actually a pretty good trainer. Doesn't really know what he's doing, but you know, he's a nice guy though, and personality really counts for something. Come on, you gotta do the lap thing when you walk around. I must say. You're in a gym, you gotta do the lap thing, come on. Somebody just asked me if I'm smaller or bigger now than I was in my uh, competition days. And uh, of course my competition days aren't necessarily behind me. I may compete again, but the fact is is that back in the day, uh, some of those photos that you're seeing when I'm on stage, first of all, I have a tan on, all right? The tan makes a difference. And at the same time, I'm also dieted down for a show. So a lot of people don't understand that when you're taking a photograph that you look a lot bigger when you're really lean. So that's why some of these guys are getting adored online. They're 140 pounds, but they're all lean. It's kind of like the Rambo syndrome, you can call it. You know, uh, Sylvester Stallone wasn't really a big man, but he looked big on camera because he was so shredded down. So when you're shredded, it really does give that appearance on camera that you're much bigger than you really are. So am I bigger now? I'd say my back is bigger than it was in the old days. Actually, my back has come up quite a bit. My chest needs to come up a little bit. My chest needs to come up a little bit because the dislocating shoulder did change the way my mind muscle connection was happening with my chest. So that did deter my chest training for quite a while, but it's all coming around now. So I should be back on track in no time. Some guys need a machine to get the cardio workouts in. I'm so advanced, I don't need a machine. Do you not have a kid? See, the thing is, a lot of people don't really know this about me, but I'm uh, pretty much an expert at overcoming obstacles when it comes down to the physical body, right? When I was 18 years old, I herniated a disc in my back and I was back to squatting in about one and a half years. And I had a severe herniation of a disc where the doctor said, you will never squat again or lift weights again without wearing a back brace. The bottom line is, is that a lot of these setbacks that I've had have only done one thing, and that is increase my awareness in how the biomechanics of the body works. So because I dislocated my shoulder, I became ultra conscious of how the bicep really helps stabilize the shoulder, how the rotator cuff works, all this kind of stuff. So it's all been an intense learning curve for me. So now I can share that knowledge with you guys. So the thing is, is that I'm convinced 100% that I have still not brought the best body that I can yet to this planet and I'm going to continue to do this and encourage you guys to do the same because it's just fun to challenge yourself it's fun to be creative it's fun to work on that great piece of art you know be like the Leonardo da Vinci of bodybuilding or something hey, hey Kyle you mind working the camera while I'm on here make sure I'm in focus yeah right there <laughs> man you guys are just a bunch of dead weight around here
Now I know I had somebody ask me about strip sets and uh, super sets and giant sets and all that kind of stuff. So this is one of those giant sets that I do. First of all, I'll contract the tricep as much as I can with the press down and get a good pump. And then I will move right into a stretching type exercise, which is the overhead lunging tricep extension, which I do have in the two day split A program. So if you guys haven't purchased that, go right out, get that program because this exercise right here, this ex exercise right here is in it, okay? I don't know what the hell to call this exercise, but I call it an overhead lunging extension tricep push out, vice versa tricep thing. What are, I don't know, I can't even remember what I call it, but you get my point. But the bottom line is, then I will go down and strip the set down and continue to work that long head of the tricep, right? So I find the long head of the tricep doesn't fatigue as fast as say the smaller heads. So you can really take that set further if you engage the longer head after you engage the outer head, okay? Another smart tip, total genius stuff here. Maybe you guys recognize it. Maybe I just sound crazy, but that's, that's how I do that. off my bicep so I like to keep it on there if I keep the arm bent you see when I lock the arm straight I find that it takes attention off the bicep brachia and puts it on the forearm so that's why I don't lock the arm straight also it causes my shoulder to start to come in with the rotator cuff to stabilize the shoulder because the bicep helps stabilize the shoulder so there's a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing The cables are a nice change from barbells and dumbbells because the constant tension, right? So cables allow you to get that constant tension all the way up and all the way down because uh, yeah, the tension's not based on just one direction. It's based on multiple directions. So no matter which way you decide to pull the bar, there's still tension. Yeah, I like doing the cables here and there. And the thing is, is that I have to also work differently than maybe before with my bicep because my left bicep, my right bicep are a little bit imbalanced based on, uh, you know, the torn rotator cuff I have on one side and the other torn labrum I have on the other side. So <laughs> there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in there that I'm compensating for, which is why sometimes my movement patterns are a little bit different and less smooth than say uh, somebody else would like to see. It's because I'm working with my individual torque curve of my body based on the injury history from hockey and all that kind of stuff too. But as you can see, it's quite obvious that whatever it is that I'm doing is working. So here I'm just doing a pose here just to show you guys what I look like right now. I'm actually putting on some size. I really am coming into my own right now. I can really see what's going on with my body based on my diet. I'm eating a lot of carbs and protein right now and I'm not focusing on cutting too much, but at the same time, I'm not trying to eat too much fat here and there. And I have been eating a little bit of duck eggs, mostly chicken for my protein, basically. Mostly chicken and then once in a while I'll have some sushi and then I'll have some red meat once every three or four days. Then I'll have some red meat. So that's really what I'm doing for my protein. And I'm about 150 grams a day protein. That's probably where I'm at. Big leg breaking, big leg breaking, big leg breaking. So it was a pretty awesome workout. Because I did some heavy Romanian deadlifts last night, just doing some lat pull downs for back was more than enough. That's the neat part about it is that some exercises will work multiple body parts. And then when you go to do more of the isolation movements, you get uh, way more of a pump and way more benefit because you're actually, it's kind of like a, a two day sort of pump and stretch principle type of idea. So basically because the day before, I am a little bit sore, a little bit tight. Then when I come into a stretching movement for that muscle group, sometimes you can get some extra gains from that. So this is a secret tip. A lot of guys don't know this, but slightly sore, then do a stretching movement, and 
ultimate gains, massive gains. I also trained a little bit of inclines and a little bit of biceps and triceps. And I just wanted to get a little bit of a workout in there to get the pump because last night I did train a little bit of heavy chest. I trained heavy back and I trained some heavy Romanian deadlifts, right? So I did the, the three, the legs, chest and back type workout yesterday. So today I just wanted to work a little bit on uh, some of the areas that I wanted to work on that were weak links, especially the, you know, the arms and at the same time the upper chest as well as of course working that width for the back. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video and I hope you got something out of it and stuff and, uh, and you know that it may take more than two years to reach your max potential. This is a good thing. It might take you 10, 15 years because I think where people limit themselves in their potential is not necessarily the truth. Sometimes you can achieve a lot more than you think. So thanks a lot for watching and if you need to get a hold of me just go to naturallandbodybuilding.com and thanks a lot to the Patreon subscribers and please become one if you can. The link is down below and take care for now.